Anybody Hocus Pocus fans in here? <laughs> well, I am very, very excited to be here to introduce this next panel. My name's Matthew Kelly of the Horror Movie Night Podcast. Uh, swing by our table, buy a shirt. And we have two of the infamous bullies from the original Hocus Pocus here with us. We have Jay and Ernie. I, oh, I'm sorry, Ice, of course, his name is Ice. So let's bring them down here. We have Larry Bagby and we have Tobias Jelnick. Oh, you got the roadie here? Cool, cool. <laughs> I have a favor to ask. I always love hearing Larry play guitar. Do you mind? Let Larry play a song real quick? I think, are we okay with that? Yeah. Is it in here somehow, Larry? I'm not sure how you get yeah, it Yeah, you remember I taught you how to do this, but I'm yeah, paying you good money to be well. the roadie. <laughs> I'll, we'll, we'll go through this again ne next show, but seriously, Tobias, I'm paying you good money for this. <laughs> this is embarrassing. You know we're wasting time that Doug could be here with us. Here, make sure it's tuned. <laughs> The last time knows if we're really Charles. serious or not. We continue to fight. Uh, that's what makes us we're the exact same as we were 30-something years ago. Sorry about it. <laughs> I think that's why they come here. <laughs> Look at everybody. Can I take a, a video of, of this audience? Woo! It's packed out there. We can fix the fill in the spots in post so it looks like it's really. <laughs> All right, you guys ready for some stuff? What do you think? Is it okay if I just. Bring yeah, it I think that's there? all right. There we go. I'm so happy I got my gift. Uh huh. Okay, this is how you tune a guitar. This thing was, uh, it got lost in the, in the airport in Newark. I came from Detroit. To Newark and I made the flight but my bags did not so I thought oh well it'll come in later tonight and they go home oh, unfortunately Mr. Bagby your guitar and your bag and all your stuff won't be arriving until tomorrow night I said that's ridiculous can you get it sooner no so then last night I got another message saying it didn't make it again so I got it today at about noon and I'm so happy the upside is they also gave him a voucher, said go shopping. And I went to Marshall's clothes, and spent so. $300 on new clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm wearing the cut, even though I had the other clothes on, I put on my other clothes anyway. This is what happens when... Almost. It's been in hot or cold weather. And just banging around inside of an airplane for a little bit, too. There we go. Okay. This is called Play With a Heart. I'm a player with a heart. Always tell them at the start. I want to love you, but I want to love her, too. I love Whitney, I love Jane, and I love Justine all the same. Spend the bottle might just be my favorite game. I fall in love with each new day, brand new girl won't play. The only trouble is I think she won't stay. I don't mean to make you sad, please don't think that I'm bad. Play her with a heart, that's how I'll roll. I'm a player with a heart, always tell them at the start. I want to love you, but I want to love her too. I love Betty, I love Lou, and I love Barbara. And who are you? Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Good to see you, babe. I fall in love with each new day, brand new girl. Want to play the only trouble, think she won't stay. Please don't think that I am bad Play with a heart, that's how I'll say 
bring it down. Come on, let's get those hands clapping. I'm a player with the heart. See, I always try to tell the man to start. If you can take it, come along with me. I love Betty, I love Sue, and I love Barbara, but not Lou. And nothing's wrong with loving Lou, but Lou's just a buddy of mine. Uh, I fall in love with each new day. Brand new girls want to play. The only trouble, think you won't stay. I don't mean to make you sad. Please don't think that I'm bad. Just a player with a heart, that's how I'll stay. I'm just a player with a heart, that's how I'll stay. I'm just a player with a heart. That's how I'm gonna stay. That's how I'm gonna play. Woo! Thank you. Good night, Ohio! <laughs> well, I would love to start this panel in a second, but I'm noticing there's an empty chair still. And, you know, I think that there's a really exciting person that's at this convention. I think it's probably the human being that literally has given Lon Chaney Jr. a run for his money for being the man of a million faces. So let's bring out the incredible Doug Jones. <laughs> Do the doggy. We do the doggy. We do. <laughs> Hello, thank you. What what a lovely, humongous venue. Yeah. That we didn't fill. I know. <laughs> but thank you. We'll so fix much. it in post. Thank Doug. you for being here. Yeah, we're gonna fix it in post. Yeah. Thank you for being here so much. Well, I'm always worried no one's gonna show up. <laughs> so you did. <laughs> Bless you. So, 30 years ago, yeah. <laughs> Hocus Pocus came out, and I feel like. It had to have changed all three of your lives in so many different ways. Uh, let's talk about it right out the gate. The movie, admittedly, was kind of just a, a minor hit on release, but now is pretty much on 30 days a week in the month of October on any channel. Right. What, what was that like? Like, when that came out, like, where were you when it came out and it did okay, and where were you when you found out that it had become this phenomenon to a generation of people. Right, well when we were filming it, we all thought we had a hit on our hands. I, I was sure I was gonna be on lunch boxes across the country. <laughs> and then it came out in theaters in July. Such a weird call, weird, right? Weird time, <laughs> yeah, a, a, a Halloween movie in July. <laughs> and uh, they advertised it as a Bette Midler comedy, because she was, she was huge then, coming off a string of, of Disney Touchstone hits, like Be Down and Out in Beverly Hills, and Outrageous Fortune, Ruthless People, what, Beaches had just come out, so one after another. So they were really banking on her name, instead of calling it a family-friendly Halloween kids movie. Yeah. Uh, so once that got to the public later, after the, the dismal <laughs> uh, uh, theater run, um, is when it started airing on TV. ABC ran it, ABC Family Channel, which became Freeform Channel. It's on every day of the month, like you yeah. said. Uh, then, of course, it went through VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, digital, this, that, that's on Disney+. Plus. Hee-haw, hoo-hoo-hoo. It's everywhere now. <laughs> And it's only because of you people keep watching it and asking for it and all, on all those platforms and levels. So thank you for the, from the bottom of our hearts yes, for that. You. Yes. Yeah. And how about you two? I mean, same question there. Uh, for me, it was like around, uh, probably around the 20th anniversary. There was a friend of mine who was big, big Twitter, you know, person. I was trying to get some of my music out there and, and uh, she sent me a, a tweet <laughs> uh, saying, uh, you know that Hocus Pocus is like the number one thing talked about um, well, this Halloween right now. It's like it's like trending or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was like, really? Wow, that's pretty cool. So yeah. that's where it kind of began, but it just, it began to get, we heard more and more about it and then got invited to a, a screening at uh, El Capitan where uh, Kenny Ortega, the director, and uh, 
uh, John Debney, the composer, and Vanessa Shaw and I were, were there. I think they tried to just kind of get a hold of a few people at that last minute because I got a call like just hours before. <laughs> <laughs> so we ran down there and it was really cool. It was packed and then we did a panel and then we watched the movie with a, a full a theater that was full. <laughs> yeah. And it was amazing because people were, you know, quoting my lines and everybody's lines and yeah. and it was like this is what it could have felt like maybe when it came out but it wasn't anything like that then it weirdly has the same trajectory like for a f for film historian nerds or whatever it's almost like the halloween version of it's a wonderful life you know like this movie that came out and did did okay in theaters and yeah. but because it only did okay in theaters it was an easier buy up for tv for stations TV, to yeah. run right. and it just became this phenomenon mm -hmm. from that point on was How, christmas, christmas story like that too a little I think, bit or I was think that so. always yeah i think it was too yeah like a little bit of a it's it's weird how that works out there's sometimes that initial mm, <laughs> is not the end of the story right. yeah yeah how about you tobias do you remember yeah. when you realized that well, there it had taken a new life um Yes, you know what? What I what I love to share though, even before that, is when it came out. I don't know. There was something when Doug was talking about, you know, just the turn. And for me, I remember because I went back to being a teenager in Santa Barbara, which is a smaller out, you know, like beach suburb, yeah. you know, near Los Angeles, and nobody went to, see, you know, see the movie. I, I remember <laughs> I was skateboarding down the main drag there, which is State Street, and there were a few theaters, and I remember Hocus Pocus was playing at one of them, and I was with a kid I had, I didn't really know that well, and, and um, I hadn't seen the movie yet, and so just as kind of a little spite, as a, I wanted to play a little trick on myself, I'm like, hey, let's go watch this movie, Hocus Pocus. <laughs> and there were like maybe 10 or 15 people in the theater, and I remember it blew his mind, just the fact, you know, he's like, who, who am I sitting next to and what is this? You know, but he's like, but it's a Disney movie and what is going on? And there's Bette Midler singing and, you know. Um, uh, so it was odd, like that's the thing is, as a, you know, being in a part of this film and having just gone, had it was a magical experience going up to LA and we had done it, you know, we had gone to Massachusetts and then we spent a lot of time in LA and on the Disney lot and the stages were amazing. Even if yeah. for the time, I mean, like the house, the Sanderson sisters house was, you know, full scale inside a stage. It was the real deal. Mm -hmm. um, you finish something like that and then the movie comes out and it what like this, this just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and you had Sarah Jessica Parker, you had, you know, it was, and Kenny Ortega was, was doing some really cool stuff at the time. Um, so it was really interesting to have that be the first any like that was my yeah. first anything, and then it's like okay, so filmmaking can also be this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so <laughs> then it really was social media. I mean, it really is the audience, you know. And I think that's what we've seen in the past ten years, where audiences can find each other. I mean, it was a great movie, and but I think the audience was also very far apart look we're in Pennsylvania you know there are people everywhere that fell in love with the movie social media really was the turn where yeah. the fans found each other and it's a wonderful thing we're seeing with all television yeah. programming right they can create this that they can choose the direction of shows that get produced I think that that's the I've always said that that's the magic of the internet is that we realize once the internet came around we realized that we all had these I refer to them as shared singular experiences mm -hmm. Where in our lives we felt like, oh, I'm the only person who's ever heard of this movie. And then this thing explodes and you're like, oh, there's thousands of me yeah. that also felt like they were the only person who heard of yeah. this movie. Right. Um, I, I, do you ever feel, though, that like, I, I feel like there's this element of Disney knows that they have a hit, right? They've done a sequel. There's the, the Sanderson sisters are at Disney World in October, <laughs> but yet... The DVDs and Blu-rays are like bare bones, no special features, no commentaries, and I, I mean, I think I speak for most of us here, I would buy another Blu-ray if it's like, hey, here's a cast commentary or something, right? Like, yeah. yeah, and we would love that because we make more money on it. <laughs> yeah. I'll comment on anything, or not, as yeah. long as you think there's something more. <laughs> You'll buy. Um, you know, I don't know if we're allowed to talk about the book. I, 
I'm just going to say, you yeah, guys, they picked I up don't say that the it leaked here. <laughs> well, we just got interviewed basically um, to uh, about our experience on uh, working on Hocus Pocus. Uh, so I think they're going to release a book uh, of the behind the scenes stories uh, that each of our characters tell. I, mu I might have. Yeah, Doug, mm -hmm. you do a lot of interviews, yeah. so <laughs> I'm pretty sure you did. And I have the. <laughs> I also have the memory of a goldfish, so <laughs> it might have happened, and then I'm swimming off to something else. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Doug also has the memory of a goldfish. Oh, did you just say <laughs> <laughs> Too soon? Yeah, right. It's fine. You know what? It was just after lunch, so I'm sure you guys are tired. Right. Uh, well, I don't no, want to. I, got I want to keep no. the conversation going real quick, but I also should point out there is a microphone up there. If you in the audience have a question for yes, any of the please. people up here, please feel free to line up. Until then, we're going to keep. The chat going just a little bit because oh, right in the middle. Okay. I remember even as a kid connecting immediately to Jay and Ice being <laughs> low key the stars of that movie. Just so <laughs> every scene that you showed up in was so funny. And Tobias, the laugh that you came up with for that character uh, is the most obnoxious <laughs> douchebag laugh I've ever heard. It's so good. Can can you still do it? I don't know. What was it? Um, I could do it for him. <laughs> you go and I'll try. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely Fit perfect. Chest bump. Yeah. yeah. We did. Yeah, we did meet a wonderful young woman today who said her room. She didn't know about Hocus Pocus, and she was in college, and her roommate had that laugh on as her like Rage text alert. Her Rage Rage Rage. Rage. Yeah. And she was like, her boyfriend was like, what, was an avid texter, so they'd be having lunch and <laughs> She's like, wow, like 20 times. Like, what is that from? She thought yeah. it was the Joker. Yeah, she thought it was the Joker. <laughs> She's like, you haven't yeah. seen Hocus Pocus? Mark Hamill, Buzz, look yeah. out. You might be coming in next for that oh, Joker yeah, voiceover yeah. role. Or walk to uh, Phoenix. I, I do see there's people lining up. I do have one last question, though, for the two of you before we jump to them. And I want to know that like I said, you guys kind of stole the movie, but I think it's because you had a great chemistry. Did you quickly become friends on set? Did you stay in touch afterwards? Or, or was it kind of just you did your job and you, you bounced? No, <laughs> we, definitely, we definitely became friends <laughs> instantaneously. We, we actually, they, they, they recognized something in each of us that, and they did a chemistry read. So our first audition was with many I remember there were a lot of actors in the room, and I know they. And it was a couple of weeks before we heard anything back. They went to Chicago, New York. You know, we were out of L.A., and then the callback. Once we did call back, it was just him and I, like at, at, at the audition, uh, reading with the director and the producers. And um, you can tell them kind of what, what yeah, the story. Well, no, we have a Polaroid too we from, had, the, yeah, we, we from that Polaroid. casting. The, the casting director took. A he took a couple Polaroids and a Polaroid is an old school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're like, is that a term of endearment? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like a selfie that prints. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like... yeah. And paper is. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, Fox but machines. to wrap that, you know, what I remember is we got to that audition and it was my first audition. It was the first time I had been on any uh, like a film or television audition. So it was all very exciting. So I didn't know how they were supposed to be. But I remember we were in, you know, a lot of these casting offices used to be in these little little trailers. You would go to the trailer casting offices. And so they had they had welcomed Larry and me into the room, stuck us in the room. There was a video camera on the far end, and the casting director nice. left the room. So the doors were closed, and I was first time, well, hello, hi, Larry, hi, Tobias. And we're there, and we were both very excited. And the next thing I know, this guy's on the floor doing a head spin. <laughs> it was around that time we used like, break dancing. Yeah, this is early. Well, we can open up some space for you right formally. now, Larry. Yes. <laughs> but that's when I knew I really liked. I was like, I like this guy. <laughs> yeah. I and our, and our chemistry. Cont I mean, so after we started working together and we were out of control, we became. In fact, he was only 15 when he, when he started the movie. I was 17, but while filming, I turned 18, and his mom realized that she could sign over guardianship for. <laughs> To buy I don't, to I don't me, think my mother so she didn't realized have to drive that. up from Santa Barbara. <laughs> that was not. That so was I started us realizing chauffeuring. we could do without my mother. So I became <laughs> his guardian. Basically. Wait a second. If we can convince her to <laughs> yeah. sign over guardianship, yeah. we've got two hotel suites and no parents. <laughs> and that's per diem, and that's room service. <laughs> 
All right, well, let's yeah. go up to the question. I see that there's some people at the mic, so let's start up there. Well, I have two questions. Okay. Um, well, the first one is that, um, what was your guys' favorite scene? Favorite scene? Yeah. Can you ask all the questions? This can't end. <laughs> you have the most gorgeous voice. This is so wonderful. Do you want to ask both of them back to back real quick, and we'll answer them at the same time? And the other one is, um, well, that, um, how long did the makeup take? How long did the makeup take? All right. Let's okay. start there. Well, then I'll start this, because I, I think I had more makeup than you two. Well, <laughs> it was quite a process, yeah. but not as long. <laughs> they were out in 15 minutes. Uh, uh, yeah, favorite scene? Oh, gosh. So many of them. Um, I think probably, uh, I kind of liked uh, my, my introduction scene, when, I, when uh, the, the spell's being done, and all the earth starts to shake, and then <laughs> my casket comes up, and then I come breaking through it and sit up and shake the dust off and then look at the kids and they all go, ah, and I go, ah, and then, yeah. Uh, there's something about that that I really like, and I loved how that was mirrored in Hocus Pocus 2. I woke up the exact same way with a different guy to look at this time, like, who are you, right? <laughs> so uh, uh, that was kind of kind of fun for me, and makeup. Uh, it was a prosthetic piece that was made um, ahead of time, so the sculpting and the, and the molding of these uh, latex foam rubber pieces were done ahead of time and also pre-painted so that they didn't have to paint it from scratch on the day. So that sped the process up quite a bit. So I was done in about two hours, gluing all this onto me, blending in the eyes, putting on that huge ugly wig. And uh, it was actually kind of hot, actually. I mean, it was a hot way. I was like a rock star zombie. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then the, the hands were just uh, gloves that slipped in over my own hands and boom, we're ready to go. All right. Um, my makeup process, uh, <laughs> I did have to have the actual eye shaved into the back of my head, yeah. uh -huh. which took some time. Doesn't the, count. No? No. It's only the front, not yeah. the back. <laughs> uh, and I had to have my hair dyed black. Black. It was dark. It had to be darker so you could really see the eyes. Uh -huh. And it was an actual, uh, they sent me to a, a, a local a good barber shop down off of Wilshire in uh, Makeup. LA. Makeup. Makeup. And... Uh, and and they, I sat in a chair with other uh, other guys that weren't like me. <laughs> As they shaved ice, everybody's looking at me. I'm kind of wondering what they're thinking. And and then once I I did that, you know, then on set they would have to refresh it and um, and all that. But. As far as scene goes, one of my favorite scenes to film uh, for us was the the pumpkin scene because I got to smash a bunch a bunch of pumpkins yeah. legally. Um, <laughs> And I also was, you know, we had a lot of fun. That scene was so lively, and there are all the kids, and I think my brother was an extra running around. The costumes and the huge lights, and we're on the back of Warner Brother lot, and it, it was just, it was magical, and it was fun and exciting, and, and you know, we couldn't wait to see how it looked later, and it looked phenomenal. So that was my favorite scene to film. My favorite scene would have been our intro scene as well. It was because I love location. I love, you know, being outdoors uh, and we were in the elements in Massachusetts and there was even light rain and we were in a graveyard and we got, you know, then we found out we were gonna hop up behind gravestones. And that was, it was, it was phenomenal. It was the beginning of, of the whole thing and everyone got along so well. It was the first time getting to see Kenny Ortega work and seeing what he's like on set, and he's he was extremely collaborative, and he you know was brilliant with young actors, and that's why he's, in so many of these he stills do he still is doing it. He knows how to play with with uh, younger performers and really get on the level to bring out that like yeah. adolescent whatever it is, like whether it's sex appeal or goofiness or pretending to be a bully, you know. Um, but your experience was different than mine in that regard because I thought I was going to lose the job after yeah. that first scene yeah, yeah. because after my first take, and I had it all worked out, right? I thought I knew what I was doing, and Kenny just pulled me aside. Super sweet, but he's like, Larry, um, it, it was so, it, it's just too big. <laughs> he goes, it, it, it's, it's not, we're not doing theater here, and I had just come off of a, uh, the, the, the musical in high school of Greece, where I played this type of character on stage and it was bigger than life, but also just the movement. I wasn't used to like having to land on a mark and 
you start to do this on and the camera's tight, you know, yeah. they you, they lose it. So I was a little nervous about that, and then it was raining, and it was kind of weird when they're saying, look here when he's over here. Mm -hmm. But I, once we got through that, for me, that, that, that was fun. But the location and going to Salem itself, yeah. it was uh, brilliant. It was amazing. It's, it's weird. In this very moment as we're talking, I'm realizing that your two characters actually might be the most villainous characters in the whole movie. <laughs> because <laughs> because really Doug's really. character turns out to be all right. Guy. He's yeah. a good guy. Yeah. Right. And yeah. like the witches are so bumbling they're throughout like most of it that they're shoes. not a threat. Yeah. But you two, yeah. like, right. are we very shoes. Yeah, we will steal your shoes. You're bullying. Yeah. You steal candy, you smash pumpkins, we'll, you yeah. steal shoes. And, and there were no consequences. <laughs> None. Only Nothing. us yeah. being hung up in a cage and at the very end of the movie singing row, row, row your boat until we die. Yeah, I, I, the biggest thing that was missing in Hocus Pocus 2 was two skeletons in cages somewhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it Thank you. Been perfect. Yeah. Well, uh, I, you know, before I, I if oh, I can add an addendum to, yeah. uh, to my another favorite scene in mine was the transition when I, you're not quite sure if I'm a good guy or a bad guy. When I revealed that I am a good guy, I was like, I could cut my mouth open and say so. Yeah. Right. And uh, what was written in the script originally was just one word. I was supposed to cut my mouth open, <laughs> look at, at Winifred floating in the air, and call her uh, the B word. It rhymes with witch. <laughs> um, and I was thinking, Disney kids film, I don't feel really good about this moment, you know? So I, I pitched the idea of, of having a more of a rant uh, because I have 300 years of pent up anger at this woman for poisoning me and sewing my mouth shut. So uh, I came up with the line myself, and Kenny Ortega, our director, loved it, and uh, so it stayed in the movie, and that is, Wench, Trollop, you buck tooth mop riding firefly from hell! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, I see we got another question up there. Another two-parter. All right. Um, what was your least favorite scene, yeah. and what is something that doesn't come up that you love talking about? Well, that's something you really like talking about, but doesn't come up very often. Regarding Hocus Pocus specifically? Any, anything, really. Yeah. Life. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, well, nice. <laughs> You're about to air some grievances up here. Yeah. <laughs> well, why, is my mic up? why is my microphone turned off? <laughs> we'll start down the dug and move the way up I, here No again. one's ever asked about least favorite. It's, most and least are, are, are best and worst. Favorite, least favorite are hard, hard questions to answer yeah. because it, it's like... How can you pick that one moment that then and negates the rest of the movie? Uh, it was it all sucked. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. Any I'm, scene you weren't in, Doug. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna say, I was, how did you know? Was, any scene that Billy Butcherson wasn't in really was kind of low par. Um, uh, uh, no, uh, oh gosh, I don't, I don't even know. Um, I th oh well, uh, 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 one scene that didn't make it into the movie, and I'm kind of glad for it. Um, oh, it was actually a, a, the scene made it in, but this one slip it didn't. At the party scene, the big part, the costume party. Everybody's dancing, dancing until they die after the spells put on them. They they were going to cut back to that again later, uh, and show how the party was progressing. And I hadn't left the party yet originally, uh, mm. so I hop up on stage and like start dancing with the band. <laughs> and I ha it was a night shoot, and I'd been up all night, and I was hobnobbing with the extras, and and and, and be all my energy was like. Mm. Oh. And they didn't get to my, my bit on stage until the sun was about to come up. So it was like the very end of the night. And I was like, okay, I <laughs> have no energy left. So what I, wa I, and I, I saw that scene in dailies the next day where they show what they shot the day before. And I was like, Dougie, you missed it. That was, mm. I, I, I didn't have the energy I wanted. And so I'm kind of like, oh, I'm glad that didn't show up in the film after all. So that's a, uh, was there another two-parter? Uh, it was. What's something you like to d discuss that rarely comes up during these things? Nothing doesn't come up. I think they, you know what I'm saying? I think they all, everything has been asked. It's hard to, can you think of any, hmm, hasn't come up. I, well, my love for Bette Midler, maybe. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, no, I, I, was a, I was a huge fan. <laughs> I was a huge fan of hers uh, before this. I had all of her albums, had seen all of her movies, and, and so to work with her and play her boyfriend from 300 years before was like, uh, my first night of work, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, under, I understand fandom, I really do, and I've never forgotten that. I guess I kind of already mentioned my, my least favorite moment when I thought that I wasn't gonna be able to keep this job <laughs> due to my overacting. Um, that that was a bit scary. Um, it just as an actor, any uh, when you know when you prepare yourself in a certain way, you have to you have to be able to uh, be prepared, 
but not be too attached to the words or your or what you think you want to do with it. It's like kind of letting go. And so having, you know, I was still pretty young in, in the acting. I started when I was like 12. So I'd been, I'd done a few TV and film things before that. But it, it was an adjustment to, ooh, now I've got to adjust to what the director is saying here that wasn't in my head or what I didn't, what we hadn't practiced. So yeah. that, that can be a little nerve wracking, but Kenny was great. He just, he knew how to do it in a way that, you know, he still encouraged me completely. Like, this is, you're great. This is wonderful, wonderful, you know. So it really, it really helped to have a director that, that cared about us like that. You know, it's, uh, this was with Doug mentioning uh, the scene that was edited out. Mm -hmm. um, I like that because uh, what I was, you know, I remember when, after doing the initial audition, <clears throat> we received the, I, I remember it wasn't, then I received a breakdown of the character. For some reason it was after. Um, you know, in a breakdowns where they'll give a description, a little hint at the psychology or <clears throat> maybe, a di you know, what the character is interested in or, you know, and, you know what they're about. And uh, our characters were described as, you know, we, we, um, we rode motorcycles, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and so there was supposed to be a scene where we were smoking cigarettes and we were on motorcycles and I was like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> we're going to be on motorcycles. And what I, what I, what I love about this, though, is it just goes to show it's the stuff that was edited out of Hocus Pocus that made it different. It's like if we, well, that would have been a rather typical kind of two-dimensional. Yeah, here's stealing the candy on the seems like a weird downgrade from right. like a motorcycle cigarettes. Stealing shoes. Cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, stealing like, you know, it's like, no, don't give them motorcycles. <laughs> Make them steal the guy's shoes. Yeah. Not even the bike. Someone's like, why didn't you take the bike? <laughs> <laughs> like, Good there's call. like foot fetish? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that's the thing with it. You know, ice so has a things. foot fetish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not so, ice, but. Yeah. So luckily the motorcycles and the, you know, 5 a.m. dance were cut out. Yeah. We're, yeah. yeah we're, 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 <laughs> you know, I will add some uh, addendum. Is that addendum I I'd like to make it. Uh, can I speak with my lawyer? <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> In um, addendum number, um, Johnny Depp, I, I had a, a, a something that that I heard from Kenny after we had started doing, I guess, screenings. to They test the audience to see how they respond, and certain people get to see it before randoms. And then they go in and they have to say, did you like this, that? And I guess at one point, you know, a movie can get a little long. They have to start cutting. So th apparently our, they tried to cut our characters out completely. Oh, no. And it didn't test as well, which I'm so glad. Because yeah. <laughs> that would have changed all of this. Yeah, today. yeah, yeah. Um, but I guess there was that element of uh, the bull. It was relatable. You know, yeah. and like you, you're right. They were really kind of the like the real villains, the most evil. I think of, it honestly, uh, all, you right? take out your characters, it really does a lot of disservice to Max's growth. Max is great. Like, like he so, has a whole end, revenge, and re yeah, yeah, like otherwise it's just a guy trying to get a girl's attention. And it's like that's not a hurdle that needs so witches great. involved. Yeah. <laughs> like, like there's yeah. so much other stuff to get yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, is there another yeah. person waiting yeah. up there? Yep. Hello. Right. Hello. Uh, a year ago, I went to Salem, and when I was on a ghost tour at Allison's house, I saw a ghost. And I was wondering if you guys had any ghost stories from when you were in Salem. Uh, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> any ghost stories on the on the stage? Mm, I'm uh, sorry. You know, yeah, I've never had a ghost story. No, where at the time. Uh, but we have met a phenomenal witch who has kind of taken over Salem, Bora. Oh. Yeah, 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 you're, you're familiar. Okay. okay. Yeah. Bora! Yeah, yeah. We just met Bora, uh, when was that? Orlando, was that Florida. Orlando, Orlando was yeah. it this, was Came that? down to host our. Yes. Has he met? So, <clears throat> anyway, not, but, and, and she, he, he, he seems, he, yes, he, he um, <laughs> makes a phenomenal witch. He, yeah. Anyway, quite a celebrity there now. Yeah. It was, yeah. So no ghosts, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, she had a fun story. All right, we got another one. <clears throat> oh, we got a nice line, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we do? Uh, oh, oh, great. For Doug, uh, whose idea was it anyway when you released Live Moths from your... It wasn't mine. <laughs> 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 like, you got your mouth sewed up with, like, Live Moths, and it right. was just... 
phenomenal for the time period because I've never seen that done before. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was the idea, of course, was that he's been a rotting corpse in the ground. So, of course, he's kind of hollowed out and strung together with dust. That's why my body parts come off so easily. <laughs> Unfortunate for him. Um, so, uh, so the moths were going to, that was in the script anyway. But then the, getting that to happen was okay, CG isn't what it is now. So, we got to do this practically. So uh, uh, three live moths that were, uh, had a moth trainer that brought them in a cage and he had little tweezers to grab them by their wings and a moth trainer, that's a job. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, there was also a lady on set from the Humane Society to give us that stamp at the end of the movie that no animals were harmed in the making of this film and, and include the insects, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's like she was there to oversee like we weren't harming them. Now you know that same lady swatted them in her car on the way home, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, you can imagine. Anyway, bless her heart. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, they had a, a, a retainers on both 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 top and uh, upper and lower in my mouth with a uh, a latex sheath that kind of protected them from the moisture in my mouth and me from them. I could still feel them kind of going yeah. on my. It was, a, <laughs> it was it was oh. nasty. Yeah. Um, and then there was a cup on the on the roof of my mouth that had uh, uh, purified dust in it. So that, so when I go. <coughs> You saw a puff of dust too, along with the moths flying up and out. So uh, it was, uh, moths have to stay really dry or they won't fly. Learn this the hard way because take one didn't go as planned. Uh, yeah, they, the last thing they did, they had everything rolling and ready to go before they put the moths in. So they only had so much time before they would start getting moisture in my mouth. So, <laughs> so everything, cameras are rolling, sounds going, everybody's ready, good. They moths go in, they, they kind of tack glue my little stitches down so I could pop them open, and poof, a light explodes. So they're like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know, right, so now they're gonna reset the light, and we have everything ready, and so I can feel the water table going, because, mm. <laughs> you know, my mouth has an intruder in it, and so your saliva glands are like, you know, process this thing. So, oh. so sure enough, <laughs> They get it. the light fixed, we're rolling again, and then I cut oh, this open, and pfft, hey, this mud comes out, and the, this moth is like uh, <laughs> riding a waterfall of saliva mud. So take two went much better, as it should. Yeah. yeah. You were just one poorly planned swallow away from not getting that no animals being harmed in the making yeah, of the yeah, movie. Yeah, we, we came awful close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, next one. That was actually my question, but I thought of another one in line. Oh, so between um, Jay and Ice, who would win in a fight and why? Oh. <laughs> that what? Between we, Jay and Ice. Between you two who would win in a fight? I mean, we can open the up the down there yeah. and find out yeah. <laughs> in real time. But <laughs> I don't know. Like I think, I think he'd probably be, beat me somehow. I, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like you got the muscle, but he's I'd scrappy. I'd slip while he's, you know. <laughs> he he's, might be faster, so... You might like try to beat me up, and then I'd try to run after you, and you'd get away. I think it'd be a real David and Goliath all, type. Because I have like all my chains, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I don't have the finesse. I could just sit on him and maybe win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or roll over. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I think in the end, we would just both wussy out. Like, we'd be like, hey, man, let's go. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> like, if they're like, fight, fight, fight. We're like, like, do a fake fight, and then one of us would act like we're dead, and then as soon as everybody was gone, we'd be like, Meet me at back at back of the house. Yeah. We'll play Nintendo. We got some shoes to steal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nintendo. All right, next person. So was working with Bette Midler as amazing as you thought it might be? Oh, oh yeah, yes. <laughs> she's uh, as fantastic as she seems? Yeah, she is. She's she's quite fabulous. Quite a, she's earned her diva ness uh, okay. over the years. And so uh, she uh, there, during that same scene, uh, the party scene where she got up on stage with her sisters and they all sang, I put a spell on you. Mm -hmm. To watch that happen live was like, ah, <laughs> amazing, yeah. And uh, during that, when they were resetting some cameras up, um, I still had my mouth sewn shut. So I was talking to her like this, like, oh, hey, hey, how's it going? Uh, and she, she told me that she, at that moment, that she thought I was doing a great job with Billy and that I was very funny. <gasps> and I thought, what a compliment. If a light fell on me now and killed me, I'd be I'd die be happy. happy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bette Miller thinks I'm funny. Yeah. So, yes. okay. Yeah. So it's all okay. Yeah. That's and then awesome. making Hocus Pocus 2, um, yes. uh, we were, uh, she, we'd, 
we had had some interaction in the meantime. Uh, the year before we made the movie, the second movie, she did a Halloween special that was online during the, the lockdowns. Oh, right. And uh, she, she called me personally to ask me to participate in that and get back into my Billy Butcherson makeup and also my makeup artist got involved and, and we filmed a segment. Uh, everyone filmed segments for that special uh, in their homes and uh, you know lo all over the world. Uh, so she was very, very grateful because that was a freebie we gave her for her, for her charity. And um, yeah, so it was great, great fun. So when I got back to her on set for Hocus Pocus 2, she was like, thank you so much again for doing that thing. Hug, hug, hug. I'm like, ah, oh of course. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Exceeding yeah. expectations. Yeah, and, and she sat down next to me at one point saying, so what have you been up to? I'm like, <gasps> oh, let's just hang and chat then, Bette Midler. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I, was, I was just in a uh, film that won Best Picture yeah, at the that. Oscars. Well, the that's just it. She had, she had <laughs> seen The Shape of Water, and she wanted to tell me how well, lovely she loved it, how much she loved it. Yeah. So, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, us on the other hand, we never got asked. <laughs> I would have done it for free. <laughs> and uh, maybe that had something to do with Hocus Pocus 2, two's return of my not being returned, uh, with none of the kids. But you know what? They'll make it up in three. We've already yeah. got, no. I we really, don't know. We don't know. We just we need the Jay and I side story. Like when they would yeah, yeah. do like Lion King two and a half and it'd just be like, here's yeah. what Timon and Pumbaa have been up to. <laughs> like, totally. All right, we got another Tom question. And Jerry. <laughs> All right, so this one's for Ice. As a kind of shoe guy and Doug, your shoes are banging, but I'm more of a sneaker guy. So you still It ain't Ice no more, it's Ernie. <laughs> oh, oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I've grown up. All right. Ernest. <laughs> Ernest. <laughs> Mr. Ice. Right, let him ask his question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, I'm so. entertaining the kids. Okay. <laughs> yeah. all, right, all right, Ernie. Um, so Hi. you took Max's shoes. Did yeah. they actually have only one pair of shoes and you wore the same size, or they actually had two different sizes of the same shoe? I don't know why I was in it. But you know, I think it was a couple different. No, you know, yeah, I think it was different shoes because I'm a 12, and uh, I think Omri's like maybe more like a 9 or 10. Those shoes were actually a very big deal for the, the like those sh it was like a McDonald's commercial like with the with the hammer like trainers. these were the new cross trainers that had to they, they needed their exclusive shot it had to be the right oh, angle right. and so they had yeah those were getting buffed in between takes yeah, uh both Larry's pair and and Max's yeah yeah and we, and I, I th I'm certain uh, Nike also uh provided us with our cast jackets at least the oh, jacket yeah, itself, yeah. the Hocus Pocus, it was like purple sleeved That's right. night jacket with the Hocus Pocus black, like uh, the witches on the back flying. It was pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go on a slightly off Hocus Pocus tangent, but you've given me such a beautiful leeway because you mentioned McDonald's. Yes. <laughs> and we have Mac tonight <laughs> well, up on the stage. Uh, Chicken Doug, nuggets. I, I need to ask you, <laughs> are you are you aware that you're currently in what seems to be a months-long feud with Seth Meyers? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow. uh, I posted a picture recently, like a flashback Friday or a th throwback Thursday picture on my social media. It's of me holding my Mac tonight moonhead in the 80s with my curly 80s hair. And, uh, and he got tagged up <laughs> <It's> on that. <laughs> Seth, on the social Seth media. Myers. Yeah, Seth Myers. He made a he made a throwaway Mac Tonight joke on his show, and he does a Friday YouTube channel where fans all over the world are just sending him Mac Tonight right. memorabilia right. in droves, and he's like, right. "Please stop." Right. <laughs> like, right. Right. It's his uh, YouTube show called Corrections. He does after the yeah. show, right? Yeah. So, uh, so he he's he's highlighted me personally on yes. that high, on that corrections bit uh, more than once now. You got to send him a headshot. Well, he he, <laughs> he actually picked up a, he had printed out uh, that my post with my old <laughs> '80s picture and said, yeah, well, I've been tagged a lot. Here's the, the real Doug Jones, <laughs> and then he made a joke about my hair matching his brother's hair when he was four, and they put him <laughs> the pictures together. So he said, I didn't know my brother really played Mac tonight. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're better than Seth. We know Thank, that you. Thank you. <laughs> we do still have time if anyone wants to hop up on the mic, but, you know, we... No one cares. Come on. Aww. This is the moment. Okay. We're good. never going to get that special edition Hocus Pocus Blu-ray if, if we can't <laughs> fill the whole hour. I think we've told... I think we've said enough. Oh, yeah. When you were in Salem, did you get to go see any of the landmarks? Well... You guys actually went and saw... We did a tour there, but we weren't... Uh, Tobias and I ended up 
having work obligations. Um, so Re Doug recently, we did a convention in, in Manchester, New Hampshire, and took a day trip with uh, some fans in a bus. Uh, we did a tour of Salem. That was just like Misty was there, yeah, right? Was, Misty, yeah. Back, yeah. Back, yeah. Yes. Back, oh, did you see the yes. nurse house? Back in September. I'm sorry. Did you see the Rebecca Nurse House? The Rebecca Nurse House. Is that something familiar to you? I don't. Well, I don't think yeah, so. She was the very last witch to be uh, hung. Oh, is that right? No. And, and oh, she's also my nine times great aunt. I would. Oh, is that oh, right? Wow. Yep. Oh wow. Yep. We we saw we a go. we saw a gravestone of a of a witch, and it, they had it was a more recently carved gravestone that that like uh, talked about the tragedy uh, of it all. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't remember the name on there. I'm sorry. Probably was her because. She was the very last one. That's when the society realized, like, if she can be a witch, anyone could be accused of a witch. Oh, gotcha. Ah, right. Nice. Right. right. Okay. Well, well, thank you. Thanks. I do. Th I think I see someone else up there. Here you go. So Hocus Pocus is like a staple Halloween movie for all of us here. Yeah. What are some of your Halloween staple movies? Oh, that's a oh. great question. <laughs> That's good. I, I go way back. I'm I'm old, so I like bed knobs and broomsticks with Angela Lansbury. Yeah. Gosh, I, you know I really like like the Charlie Brown. Uh, is there a Halloween one, right? Yeah, the big, great I got big a rock. pumpkin. <laughs> it's kind of scary though. No, oh, yeah. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. Big pumpkins scare me. I guess that's why I always like to smash them. Uh, I don't really know, man. I, I feel bad uh, badly about that because it wasn't much of a like horror Halloween. Well, bad place to probably say that, huh? <laughs> um, I love horror. It's They're all right. Me. It's just uh, not my. It's called cup of Creature tea. Feature Week. Creature <laughs> Feature. I hate horror. Oh, I love that movie, the Creature Free Feature movie. <laughs> I know, right? That was a good one. I love that character. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I do. I do like. Um, some scary movies, but I don't like scary jump kind of movies. Yeah. Like Blood on the Wall. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, if you want to talk Christmas movies, we could do that after the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you on that. All right, Tobias? Before Kids. Before Kids, this is an off-the-wall Halloween. It's not a Halloween film at all, but Point Break. Really? Wow. The ex-presidents, there was something about oh. it. I just loved the action right around that time of year. Um, after Kids, uh, it's the universe, It's the old Universal Monsters. They're, oh, made, right. they're so, amazing for a reason. Yes, yeah. like, they yeah. are, and my, my old, he's now eight, uh, our son Jack, and he has become obsessed with them, and I, one of the reasons I love him, he's brought me into the fold, and, and he's giving me new eyes with those. I love them. Bouncing off of that, has Jack seen Hocus Pocus yet? Yes, he has. Yes, both of them. Yes. He, he's kind of a fan of me. He's, <laughs> yeah. He goes, less of you, Dad. I want to uh, know more uh, what Ice uh, is up to. He's like, hey, Ice, <laughs> I want you to sign an autograph for, yeah. for my teacher. I need a little extra credit. <laughs> he's a smart kid. Yeah. They're both smart kids. All right. We got another one up there. Growing up, I had an older stepbrother who was kind of a jerk, and Ice always reminded him oh. of me. Like he kind of looked, you kind of looked like him. Um, but what what is was it What'd like? What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, twerp. <laughs> it, hey, what was it like to uh, play like the stereotypical '90s bully jerks? Like, was Did it I, fun? Was it? F it was so fun. <laughs> uh, you know. I, I actually modeled, you know, as our as as actors and artists, right? We all like like certain things, and what we like and what we believe and, and see is what we kind of take. And so, my bullies were always a combination. I loved Biff from Back to the Future. Yeah. Hello, McFly. Mm -hmm. Why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Biff. <laughs> hey, you, get your, oh, Beth. All right, I think I'm just going to announce okay. it here after, okay. after whoa, whoa, the costume Doc, Doc you're telling me. <laughs> no. After the costume contest, so Barry presents and... all of Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one man show. The Biff one man bully <laughs> show. Every bully you ever loved. Uh, Lucas was another great, there was another great bully oh, in that movie, Good Lucas. Movie, yeah. 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 Where it's like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, yeah, but I, it's fun, and it's fun to find the, the playfulness, like, 
making a likable bad guy is kind of important, I think. Because we're all, you know, we're, we can all have our bad side, but it's, if you see some, some humanity in them and they're not just all mean, like he was talking about with motorcycles and cigarettes, it's like there's a bit of a goofy thing and we're... But that's also, that's Kenny Ortega with the casting of this, you know? I mean, that wasn't exactly your question, but he cast me as a bully, gave me a, a flannel... You know, originally it was going to be a kilt. I was actually going to wear a kilt. <laughs> so then they're like, wait a second. This, and this is a part of like his fashion sense like of the 90s, which was right on point, you know, with yeah. the early 90s. Like it was the flannel, but we're in Salem, and I guess we thought it would be cool to flip it around and wear it in front. Um, and it worked. Guns it, you know? roses and that's yeah. the thing, like with the 90s, we certainly weren't thinking about it. But, you know, like right now, here we are, 2023. It's like we were so in it. We're 90s kids. Mm. Um, which is so cool to see how it's really come back right now. It's, mm -hmm. um, you know, 90s are back. Tell your brother I said hi. <laughs> uh, I hate he's doing a good job. Mood, but he's but you know, with, with the bullies, because you're talking about bullies, it's, it's interesting because that really was a time when if you were in school, and like you were dealing with bullies. Yeah. Like it, they, they could get away with a lot of stuff. I remember being terrified in eighth grade of a couple bullies. Yeah. And so that was brought into, you know, and, and that's, it's a whole different world now. And it's thankfully so. I yeah. think it's gotten a lot better. We still have a lot of online stuff happening, yeah. which is the new, you know, it's, which, which is very hard to control. Well, but and didn't you, uh, Tobias and Larry, you've done like uh, some anti-bullying talks at schools and things? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. so that, yeah. Who better to do it than them, right? We started yeah. that like five years ago. We went and we had, and it was wonderful. It was really it, quite inspiring to talk to kids about their experiences of bullying and our experiences of bullying and and um, how it's changed. I mean, because the difference of portraying bullies and then also coming back as mentors to kids, you know, giving them someone to talk to was... was yeah, yeah we, we were really it. surprised that, um, you know, we did a little workshop, acting workshop with them. This is, was Tobias's, the same instructor he had when he was in school and when he got cast out of, out of a play a Disney scout saw him. That was his first job ever, Hocus Pocus, which is pretty phenomenal. Uh, but we did. We had this fun thing we did, and then uh, the teacher just said, if there's anybody that wants to stay after and talk about, you know, we're going to talk about bullying or anybody that's been bullied or want to want, want, want to share. And there was a, a large group yeah. of kids that, that told us their story, and the teacher didn't even know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it really touched us. And yeah. We hope we can... And do more of that. Honestly, yeah, so. yeah. Uh, well, I think we're pretty much at time right now. So, real quick before we end, just one last time, introduce your, say who you are, what are you up to, what can people look forward to seeing with you guys in the next couple of years, and also go meet them in the celebrity room. It's closed by the time this is over, but tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> oh do we not have uh, any more time? Uh, Derek? The, the costume is in eight minutes. <laughs> yeah. Great, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> well, uh, uh, well, stick well, around. So, so this is our, our goodbyes. I, yeah. I'm, I'm Doug Jones. Hi. Um, <laughs> Woo! And, uh, hey, hey, hey. But Woo! also, uh, you can see, you can see uh, me in, uh, as Saru in Star Trek Discovery, season five, still coming uh, early next year. It's, we've done filming it now, and it will be our final season. Oh. Uh, also, season five of What We Do in the Shadows. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I got to come back as Baron Afanas for three more episodes. And I also did a, a project for that the streamer called Pure Flix. It's like a very family friendly, faith based uh, streamer for Sony Pictures. And a new show, it's an anthology show called uh, Destination Heaven. Ooh. My episode is called I Will Follow. And uh, I got to play a used car salesman who has a heart attack, meets God, gets a second chance to come back and meet, live his life right. It's hilariously funny. <laughs> Written by uh, the, one of the showrunners from that 70s show, Dean Vitale. So that's I, and that's nice. supposed to be, supposed to be that show supposed to be hitting Pure Flix this month, I thought. I, so I thought I heard March. And also, uh, for this crowd, my version of Nosferatu is completed, done. They have a trailer out that I just saw. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah. Wow. So that's coming coming this year yet too. So be looking out for wow. Nosferatu, the remix. There you go. That's awesome. Awesome. My name's Tobias Jelenic. Um, <laughs> I uh, I've got a couple no. things going on. I have a show I just did with the guys that do Cobra Kai called Obliterated. You guys got to check it out. 
for real. Is he allowed to do this? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to stop it. We'll go ahead and shut his mic down for just a moment. Uh, no, that's really something yeah, he is doing. You need to be Larry afterwards. I'm very so. proud of Tobias. I love it. He just did an NCIS Hawaii that you can be looking for. He was recently on the, uh, the witch, another witch-type project, which I'll let him tell you because I've forgotten. Oh. <laughs> Just ca I, you Tobias? Think I would have learned. Yeah, no, the Mayfair Witches, the new Anne Rice show. Uh -huh. Keep that off. Awesome. Um, yeah, but if you are a Cobra Kai fan, Obliterated is going to be, it's out there. It's adult nice. comedy. It's on yeah, Netflix. It's not quite Cobra Kai. The more yeah, it, yeah, cool. that's, yeah. Well, I can't let us get off the stage also without Larry the telling man. us where yeah. we can check out his music. Music, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Larry, you can just, honestly, uh, you can go to my, my name, Larry Bagby, B-A-G, like a bag, B-Y, dot com, and, and just, or just look up Larry Bagby, it's on all the streaming platforms, uh, Spotify, um, Amazon, uh, Costco, and Blockbuster. <laughs> um, <clears throat> also, I, I actually did, <laughs> I did work on something I'm pretty excited about that, uh, Kevin Costner's doing a series of films for Films called Horizon, and it's pre Civil War into the Civil War. And you guys know about the Civil War around these parts. And um, I play a, a nice role uh, as a, a one of the settlers that um, kind of fighting this cowboy Indian, like straight up. And it's all his own money and all of his own production. He's directing, writing, starring, producing the uh, with a, an incredible cast. So. That, that they're filming the second one right now, and uh, but the first one hopefully will be released sometime next year, and that uh, that's it. But yeah, thank you guys right. for everything. Well, that being said, before we clear out of the stage, if there was ever a group of three people that deserve a standing ovation on their way out, I believe oh. it's these three. So oh, please, thank you. Oh gosh, thank you. You're awesome. <laughs>